In its most popular sense, when people talk about mitosis, they're referring to a cell, a diploid cell. So a diploid just means it has its full complement of chromosomes. So it has two n chromosomes. So that's the nucleus. This is the whole cell. And so most people are saying, look, the cell itself replicates into two diploid cells. So it turns into two cells, each that have a full complement of chromosomes, 2n chromosomes. And so when people say a cell has experienced mitosis, they normally mean this. But I want to make one slight clarification, that formally, mitosis only refers to the process of the replication of the of the genetic material and the nucleus. So for example, this if I were to draw this, uh, let me draw the cell, and it has now two nucleuses, each with the diploid number of chromosomes. This cell has experienced mitosis. Mitosis. It has not experienced cytokinesis, which we will talk about in a few moments. But that's the process of the actual cytoplasm of the of the of the cell being split into two different cells. And just to, as a clarity, the cytoplasm is all the stuff outside of the outside of the nucleus. Cytoplasm. So I'll talk about that in a second. But just know in everyday usage, this is normally the case when people talk about mitosis. But if you got a teacher that likes to get you on a technicality, this is technically what mitosis is. It's the splitting of the nucleus into, or the replication of the nucleus into two separate nucleuses that's normally accompanied by cytokinesis, where the cells, where the, where the cytoplasms of the cells actually separate. Now, with that said, let's go into the mechanics of mitosis. So the first steps that are really necessary for mitosis actually occur outside of mitosis, when the cell is just you know, doing its day-to-day -day life. And that's during the interphase. Interphase. And the interphase, literally, it's not a phase of mitosis. It's literally when the cell is just living. So you know, the cell, let's say we have some new cell. Let me do it in green. So I have some new cell here. Maybe this is its nucleus. It's got 2n chromosomes. And then it grows. It brings in nutrients from the outside and builds proteins and do, does whatever. And so it grows. A bit. It's obviously got its full chromosomal complement still. And then at some point during this life cycle, and I'll label these actually, so this phase and interphase, and this might not even be covered in some biology classes, but you know, it's, they give it a label. They call it G1, which is really just when the cell is growing. It's just growing, accumulating materials, and building itself out. And then it, it, it actually replicates its chromosomes. So you still have a diploid number of chromosomes. So let me zoom in. So let me draw this. This is called the S phase of interphase. So this is S. And S is where you have replication of the actual chromosomes. Once again, we're not even in mitosis yet. So S, you have replication. Replication of your chromosome. So if I were to zoom in on the nucleus during the S phase, if I were to start off, let me just start with a, some organism that has that has two chromosomes. So let's say that at the beginning of S phase, and I'll, I'll actually make I'll draw things as chromosomes just to make it clear that things are being replicated. So let me say it has this chromosome right here, and then it, let's say it has this chromosome right here. As it as it goes through S phase, these chromosomes replicate. And I'm just drawing the nucleus here. I've zoomed in on just this part right here, where n is 1, where two, our full diploid co complement is two chromosomes. During S phase, our chromosomes will replicate. And we'll have, so that green one will completely replicate and generate a, a copy of itself. And we've learned this a little bit. They're connected at the centromere. Now each of those copies are called chromatids. And that magenta one will do the same thing. Now even though we have here, we had you can kind of say we have two chromatids, one for each chromosome. Now we have four chromatids, two for each chromosome. We still say we only have two chromosomes. And that's its centromere right now. This occurs in the S phase. And then as you and then the cell will just continue to grow more. So you know the cell was already big. 
this I'll draw the I'll focus on the cell again. The cell was already big and it gets bigger. It gets bigger. And that's during the G2 phase. So it's just growing more. G2. Now, there's another little part of the cell that we haven't even talked about yet, but I'll talk about it a little bit. It's not, you know, super duper important. But this is an idea of these centrosomes, and these are going to be very important later on when the cell is actually dividing. And those also duplicate. So let's say I have a little centrosome here. I have a little centrosome here. It has centrioles inside it. You don't have to worry too much about that, but there's these little cylindrical looking things. But I just want to, so you don't get confused if you see the word centriole and centrosomes, not to be confused with centromeres, which are these little points where the two chromatids attach. Unfortunately, they've named many things in, uh, 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 in this process very similarly, or a lot of the kind of parts of a cell very similarly. But you have these things called centrosomes that are going to enter the picture very soon that are sitting outside of the nucleus. And they also, they also replicate. They also replicate during the interphase. So you had, you had one before, and now you have two of them. And of course, they each have their two little centrioles inside, where we're not going to focus too much on those just yet. So that's what happened in the interphase. Now the cell, and this is most of the cell's life, and it's kind of growing and doing what it wants. And actually, I'll make a slight point here. When I drew the DNA here, I drew them as chromosomes. But the reality is, is when we're sitting in the interphase, this is not what the DNA would actually look like. The DNA, if I were to actually draw this, it's in its chromatin form. It's, all, it's not all tightly wound like I drew here. I drew it tightly wound so that you can see that it got replicated. But the reality is, is that that green chromosome was actually, it was actually be all unwound. And if you were looking at a microscope, you would even have trouble seeing it. And this is its chromatin form. And, when it, when it, and we'll talk a little bit about where it actually organizes itself back into a chromosome. But in this chromatin form, it's just a bunch of DNA and uh, proteins that the DNA is wrapped around a little bit. So you know you might have some proteins here that the DNA is wrapped around a little bit. But if you're looking at it in a microscope, it just looks like a big blur of DNA and proteins. And same thing for the magenta molecule. And really, for DNA to do anything, it has to be like this. It has to kind of be open to its environment for in order for the uh, uh, mRNA and the different types of um, different types of helper proteins to really be able to function with it, and even for it to be able to replicate. It has to be unwound like this in order to function. It only gets tightly wound like this later on. I just drew it like this, so really, you know, I had one green one, and it's going to replicate to form another green one. They're going to be attached at some point. And that magenta one's going to replicate to form another magenta one. And they'll be attached at some point, but it's not going to be clear. I just drew it this way to show that it really happened. This is the reality. It's in its chromatin form. Chromatin. Now, we're ready for mitosis. So the first stage of mitosis is essentially, well, let me, let me draw this. So I'll draw the cell. I'll draw the cell in green. And I'm going to draw the nucleus a little bit, well, a lot bigger than it normally is relative to the cell, just because, at least right now, a lot of the action is going on in the nucleus. So the first stage of mitosis is the prophase. 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 And these are really just, yeah, I mean, these are somewhat arbitrary names that were assigned to some people. You know, people looked in a microscope. Oh, you know, that's a certain type of step that we always see when a cell is, uh, when a nucleus is dividing. So we'll call this the prophase. And what happens in the prophase is that the actual, the actual, um, uh, the actual chromatin starts actually turning into this type of form. So I, as I just said. When we're in the interface, the, the, the DNA is in this form where it's all separated and unwound. It actually starts to wind together. So this is where you'll actually have, and remember, it's already replicated. The replication happened before mitosis begins. So I had that one chromosome there, and then I have another one here. It has two sister chromatids that we'll see soon get pulled apart. Now, during prophase, you also start to have this, um, these, these these centromeres up here that I was touching on before, these guys over here, they start to 
I, I, I guess the best way this, to facilitate the generation of these what, the, what you call microtubules, and you can kind of view these as these these sticks or these ropes that are going to be key in moving things around when we as we divide the cell. And all of this is pretty amazing. I mean, you think of a cell, you think of something that's you know inherently pretty simple. It's a kind of one of the, it's kind of the the most basic living structure in in us or 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 in life. But even here, you have this complex me- these complex mechanics going on, and a lot of it still isn't understood. I mean, we can observe it, but we really don't know what's happening at the atomic level or, or kind of at the protein level that allows these things to move around in such a nicely choreographed way. It's still, you know, it's, it's still an area of, of research. Some of this is understood, some of it isn't. But you have these two centrosomes and they, they start, they facilitate the development of these microtubules, which are literally like these little microstructures. You can view them as, as, as tubes or as, as some type of um, of, of rope. Now as prophase progresses, it eventually gets to the point where, let me, well, let me do it, I don't want like this word replication written here, it makes it confusing, let me delete that. Let me get rid of this replication. So as prophase progresses, the nuclear envelope actually disappears. So let me redraw this, uh, let me copy and paste what I've done before put it there. So as prophase progresses, I'm using too thick of a, there you go, the nuclear envelope actually starts to to disassemble. So this starts to actually dissolve and disassemble. And then these things start to grow and attach themselves and attach themselves to the centromere. So actually let me do do that. So this is this is all during prophase. Is all during prophase, and since all of this happens during prophase, this latter part of prophase sometimes they'll call it late prophase. Sometimes it'll be called prometaphase. Actually, let me do that. Let me write that down. I'll write what I'm prometaphase, prometaphase. Sometimes it's considered. I don't think there's a hyphen really there. Let me write prometaphase. So sometimes it's actually considered a separate phase of mitosis. Although when I learned in school, they didn't bother with prometaphase. They just called it all prophase. But by the end of prophase, or actually by the end of prometaphase, depending on how you want to view it, the whole situation is going to look something like this. You have your overall cell. The nuclear envelope has disassembled. So to some degree, it doesn't exist anymore, although you know, the, the proteins that formed it are still there, and they're going to be used later on. And you have your two chromosomes. In this case, in a human's case, you would have 46 of them. You, you have your two chromosomes, each made with sister chromatids, each made of two sister chromatids, two chromosomes. They, of course, have their centromeres, where they right there. And then these, these, these centrosomes will have migrated roughly, you know, roughly on opposite sides of the, of, of the, what was once the nucleus. And these things have kind of spread apart. The, these microtubules. So they're they're doing two functions really. At this point, they're kind of pushing these two centrosomes apart. So you have all of these things, and they're connecting. The you know some of them are coming from this centrosome, some are coming from this centrosome, some are connecting the two, and then some of these microtubules, these tubes or these ropes, however you want to view them, attach themselves to the centromeres, attach themselves to the centromeres of the actual chromosomes. And the point that they, the, the protein structure that they attach them to is called the kinetochore. So there's a kinetochore there, and that may or may not be kinetochore. It's a protein structure. And it's actually fascinating. There's still, it's still an open area of research on how exactly the microtubule attaches to the kinetochore. And as we'll see in a second, it's at the kinetochore that, uh, that it, it, you, you, the, the microtubules essentially start to pull or uh, at the DNA at the different at the two separate sister chromatids and actually want and uh, and actually pull them apart. And it's actually not understood exactly how that works. It's just been observed that this actually happens. Once prophase is done, essentially the cells, the cells then just make sure that the, the chromosomes are well aligned. I mean, I kind of drew them well aligned here, but that is kind of formally occurs during metaphase, which is the next phase. So that first one was prophase. Now we're in metaphase, and metaphase really is just an aligning of the chromosomes. So all of the chromosomes are going to be aligned at the center of the cell. So 
I have my magenta one here. I have my magenta one here. I have my and I have my other one here, my green one there. And of course, you have your centrosomes, the micro spindles that are coming off of them. Some of them are kinetochore micro spindles. They're actually attaching to the centro the centromeres of the actual chromosomes. It's very confusing, right? The centrosome is are these structures that help direct what happens to these microtubules. Centrioles are these little little structures, these little can-shaped structures inside the centrosomes. And the centromere are the center points where the two chromatids attached to each other within a chromosome. So you know this is one sister chromatid, and that's another sister chromatid, and they attach at the centromere. But this is metaphase. It's fairly easy. Metaphase, you just have this aligning of the cells, and there's actually some theories. You know, how does the cell know to progress past this point? How does it know that everything is aligned and attached? Is and then there there are some uh, theories that there's that there's actually some signaling mechanism that if one of these kinetochore proteins aren't properly attached to one of these ropes, that somehow a signal is sent that the that mitosis should not continue. So this is a very intricate process. Now you can imagine if you have 46 chromosomes and you have all of this stuff going on in the cell, and you know, and and you know, there's not like there's some individual pushing stuff or some computer here. It's all being really directed by by you know a chemist uh, by chemistry and and thermodynamic processes, but just by the 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 intricacy, or I guess you know the the um, the the elegance of of how these things are, it it happens spontaneously with all of the proper checks and balances, so that most of the time nothing bad happens, which is all quite amazing. So after metaphase, now we're ready to pull the stuff apart, and that's anaphase. Anaphase. So in anaphase, let me write that down. Anaphase. I've changed the color of my cell, these guys get pulled apart. And as soon as they get pulled apart, so let's see, this guy's getting pulled, let me do it in green. So one of the sister, oh, that's not green. One of the sister chromatids is pulling in that direction, one is getting pulled in that direction. And then the same is true for the magenta ones. Pulled in that direction, and one is getting pulled in that direction. And of course you have your centrosomes here, and then they're connected to the kinetochores that are right there, and that's where the pulling. And there's also there, there there's also a whole microtubule structure that aren't connected to the actual chromosomes, but they're helping to actually push apart these two centrosomes so that everything is going to opposite sides of the cell. And so as soon as as soon as these two chromatids are separated, and I touched on this a little bit before when we talked about the vocabulary of DNA, then all, as soon as that happens, these are each referred to as chromosomes. So now you can say that the cell has what it used to have here. It has two chromosomes. It now has four chromosomes. Because as soon as a chromatid is no longer connected to its sister chromatid, they're then considered sister chromosomes, which is just a naming convention. I mean, they were there before. They were there after. They were just attached before. Now they're not attached. So you kind of consider them their own individual entity. And then we're almost done. The last stage is telophase. The last stage is telophase. And I'm going to draw the cell a little bit different here, because something is happening simultaneously with telophase most of the time. So telophase, and actually I'll draw, you know, I'll I'll rotate the cell 90 degrees. Let's say that this was one centromere, this is the other centromere. So at this point, it's essentially pulled the DNA to itself. So this guy has pulled one of one copy of that chromosome and one copy of this chromosome. And that guy has done the same up here. He's pulled out. He's pulled over one copy of each. Oh, I use a different color. One copy of each chromosome to himself. Now let me draw that right there, like that. And now uh, the the nuclear membranes start forming around each of these two ends. So now you start having a nuclear membrane form around each of these two ends. And so by the end of the telophase, that's what we're in. The telophase. We will have completed mitosis. We will have completely replicated our two original nucleuses and all of the uh, genetic content inside of it. Now, at the same time that telophase is happening, you also normally have this cytokinesis, where this cleavage furrow forms, where essentially during telophase, these things are getting pushed further and further apart. 
by those microtubules so that they're always they're already at the ends of the of the of the cell at the of the cytoplasm of the cell and they're all you can almost see them as pushing on the sides to elongate the cell and as that is happening you have this furrow forming this little indentation and by the end of telophase and mitosis you also have this process of cytokinesis where this cleavage furrow forms and deepens 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 until the cytoplasm is actually split into two separate cells so this is cytokinesis which is formally not a part of mitosis cytokinesis but it normally occurs with the telophase so right at the end of mitosis you do normally have two complete identical cells and then once you have two each of these two cells then all of then they each individually enter their own interphase or they each individually if we look at just this one he will then be in his G1 phase and then at some point these two things are going to replicate and that's S phase and you go to G2 phase and then this guy will experience mitosis all over again